Hi everyone, thank you for joining today. My name is Xin Yao Yi, and I'm excited to be here as part of the Supercomputing 24 Boost Talk series. I'm currently a PhD candidate at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. And today the topic of my talk is developing an interactive OpenMP programming book with large language models. This work is a collaborative effort with contributions from my colleagues, Dr. An Jia Wang from Intel Corporation, Dr. Yong Hong Yan from UNC Charlotte, and Dr. Chung Hai Liao from Lawrence Livermore National Lab. For today's talk, we will begin by discussing some background on OpenMP and explain the motivation. Next, I will introduce the method we used, including how we outlined the book and generated the content for each chapter with the help of LLMs. We will talk about how code examples were created and how we integrated an interactive and incremental development approach using tools like Jupyter Notebooks. Finally, we will sum up with a conclusion. Firstly, I'd like to provide some background. OpenMP is a cornerstone in parallel computing, supporting virus architectures from multi-core processors to many core accelerators. As OpenMP has evolved, its complexity has increased significantly, has steepened the learning curve for new users. Historically, OpenMP education has relied on traditional resources like textbooks, tutorials, and online content that are manually created. But these conversational methods can sometimes lag behind the rapid developments in this field and they lack the interactivity needed to make learning effective. This is where large language models come in. Large language models enable us to create interactive, prompt-based learning experiences. Let's move on to the research questions and the motivation behind this project. Our main research question is, can large language models be used to quickly generate OpenMP learning materials for an interactive OpenMP programming book? To answer this, we explored several key sub-questions. Firstly, which LLMs should we use? Secondly, what are the most effective propping methods. Next, what is the quality of the generated learning materials? The next one, how do we keep the materials up to date? And the last one is how much human intervention is required? Our motivation stems from a common issue faced by both textbooks and LLMs, staying updated with the latest OpenMP specifications. This is a challenge in both LLM-generated content and the traditional textbooks. They are often difficult to update after publication. Now let's dive into the method we use to address the challenges of generating high-quality interactive learning materials for OpenMP using large language models. We begin by using LLMs to generate the book's structure. We use the cross model and menu reveal to ensure the correctness. Once we had the outline, we use the LLMs to generate the content, including both text and code examples. To make the learning experience more interactive, we integrate the content into Jupyter Notebooks. Next, I'll walk you through some of the challenges we faced and the solutions we applied. Firstly, for the choice of LLMs. We leveraged multiple models, including Gemini Pro 1.5, Cloud 3, and ChatGPT 4, to take advantage of their individual strength. Secondly, LLMs have a limit, limit to how much content they can process at one time. We applied a divide and conquer approach using chain of throw chain of thought reasoning where we generated two level outlines before generating detailed content. Next, to ensure consistency and relevance, we designed a prompt using the CoStar framework. We also use one-shot learning by providing examples from previous chapters to improve the continuity of the content. Then for the evolving OpenMP specifications, 
we tackled this by using in-context learning, where we uploaded the latest OpenP specifications and official examples, so the LLMs could generate content that reflects the most up-to-date information. To ensure the quality, since LLMs sometimes generate incorrect or irrelevant information, we implemented a cross-model review where outputs from one model were critiqued by another. Additionally, we manually reviewed and edited the content to ensure accuracy and clarity. Lastly, by embedding the content in Jupyter Notebooks, we provided an environment where users can execute the code examples directly, getting instant feedback and hands-on experience. Let's now talk about the process of aligning the book using the LLMs. Our goal was to balance the depths and accessibilities of the material to make it both technically occurring and educationally useful. We started by using in-context learning with multiple LLMs to generate varied outlines. We uploaded the OpenMP 5.2 specification and official examples into the models. The prompt we used was shown in the slides. Initially, the outlines generated by LLMs often missed key educational goals. So after reviewing the LLM generated outlines, we manually refined the book structure. We developed a more targeted outline and covers both fundamental and advanced OpenMP topics in a balanced way. Let's, talk a, let's take a closer look at an example of an outline generated by ChatGPT. You may notice that the generated outline is very long and detailed. It includes all the details from the OpenMP specification. Some of them are too complicated and we don't want to include them in our book. Our book will concentrate on the exercises and the interactive programming practice. Then let's look at the outline generated by Gemini. Gemini's outline included more detailed explanations about, a, about the core OpenMP concepts like shared memory models and the fork drone execution model. It also has some issues like it didn't provide anything on important advanced topics like GPU offloading. The Cloudy cannot take the whole specification at once since it has a length limitation for the uploaded files. So we ignore it regarding generating the outline. After reviewing the outlines generated by ChatGPT and Gemini, we combined the best aspects of both and then manually refined them. This revised outline is more concise. It covers commonly used directives and clauses, along with practical applications and performance opt optimization strategies. The key improvement we made here was balancing both introductory and advanced material. This revised structure helps new learners to get a solid foundation in OpenMP while still challenging advanced users with real-world examples and optimization techniques. Then let's talk about using the LLMs to generate the outlines for a specific chapter. To further, further improve the quality of the content generated by large language models, we employed the CoStar framework when designing the prompts. C stands for context. We provide the LLM with background information. For example, we could see, I'm currently writing a book on OpenMP parallel programming aimed at teaching others. I have completed a chapter on Teams, and now I'm focusing on synchronization, specifically barrier and ordered constructs. This context helped the LLM understand the broader picture of what we were trying to achieve. O stands for objective. We clearly defined this task such as generate an outline for a chapter on synchronization, focusing on barrier and ordered constructs, and base it on the style of the previous chapter. This ensured that the LLM knew exactly what we wanted, down to the specific topics and the constructs. 
S stands for style. We specified the style as educational and structured, which helped the LLM understand that we were aiming for, for, for a format suitable for a textbook. This also guided the model to generate more formal and instructional content. T stands for tone. The tone we aimed for was instructional and clear. Since the content is meant for student and programmers new to parallel computing, the tone had to be encouraging and easy to follow. A stands for audience. We made it clear that the audience would be students and programmers who are either new to OpenP or educators looking for teaching resources. This helped the LLM tailor the complexity and explanations to match the needs for the target audience. R for response. Finally, we asked the, uh, for a specific response format, such as a structured outline detailing the the sections and the subsections of the chapter. This ensured that the output was useful and could be easily integrated into our book. By following this approach, we were able to prompt the LLMs to generate more relevant and detailed outlines. For the results, Gemini Pro 1.5 provided a more concise outline focusing on a key point like synchronization and enforcing order with the order directive. However, it lacked in-depth practical examples and explanations. GPT-4 delivered a more detailed structure, offering step-by-step -step explanations and more comprehensive examples, like using the do across class and the considerations for order directive in parallel loops. While GPT-4 provided more depth, it included some redundant information like serial output in parallel loop that we needed to trim down. Cloud Day 3 produced a highly detailed outline covering basic concepts and the use cases, as well as exploring more advanced scenarios. It even includes topics like nested directives and debugging synchronization issues. However, it was overly complex for beginners. The advanced topics like debugging synchronization issues made the learning curve steeper than necessary for students new to OpenP. We finally manually refined them to create the final chapter outline. We followed a three-step assessment process to ensure the quality and the occurrence. Firstly, we conducted a cross-model review where one LLM critiqued another's outline. Next, according to the OpenP specification, we manually inspected each outline. Finally, we integrated the structures. We kept the core topics like the barrier and order directives, ensuring that practical examples were provided. However, we also retained some of the advanced topics like nested directives and tasking so that more experienced users can benefit from the materials. Now let's move on to how we used these models to create specific content, such as explanations of OpenP directives and core examples. We continue using the CoStar framework to structure our prompts, but we will not go in details here. And we only present the results generated by ChatGPT and Gemini. ChatGPT's output provided a clear and concise explanation of the task directive in OpenP, focusing on its use for parallelizing irregular workloads. The generated code example was simple and effective, demonstrating basic syntax and task creation. However, we identified one error in the content generated, which we had highlighted in red in the images. In fact, when an if clause is present on a task construct and the expression in value is too false, an undeferred task is generated and the encounting threads must be suspend the current task region. 
Gemini generated a more detailed explanation, covering both explicit and implicit tasks, and introduced the task dependencies using the depend clause. There are also some mistakes in Gemini's output. The statement implicit task created automatically by OpenP when certain constructs like parallel loops with nested tasks are encountered. This statement is incorrect. Implicit tasks are created by OpenMP parallel regions. Additionally, when explaining the generated example, the assertion that task two must wait for task one to complete, it, complete is also incorrect. Task two does not intuit task one unless explicit dependencies are defined. These examples highlight the need for a manual review of LLM generated content. Now let's talk about how we generated specific code examples using the CoStar framework. Similarly, we will not go in details here. We use the same D directive usage as the example. In the GPT-4 example, the code uses SIMD directive to perform SIMD vectorization. Additionally, it employs the linear directive to handle the factor variable. In the Gemini Pro 1.5 example, the code initializes two arrays and performs element-wise addition using SIMD. It also uses the SIMD learn for clauses. It means that the compiler will attempt to vectorize the loop with a width of four elements. Cloud Day 3 introduces a more complex scenario where it combines SIMD vectorization with parallel reduction. The code starts with SIMD directive to the, for the element-wise addition. It also uses reduction clause to perform a reduction operation across the results array C. The GPT-4 and the Gemini Pro 1.5 examples offer more advanced usage of SIMD compared to Cloud Day 3. With GPT-4 focusing on linear variable adjustments and the Gemini Pro 1.5 in incorporating hardware level optimization through the SIMD lens class. Cloud A3's example is simpler, combining basic SIMD operations with a parallel reduction. Gemini Pro, Pro 1.5 stands out in terms of performance optimization, providing explicit control over vector length, which can lead to better performance on specific hardware. We conducted a detailed analysis of each generated example, noting that each LLM demonstrated varying levels of understanding for different directives. Overall, in terms of both generating and explaining examples, GPT consistently performed the best, following by Gemini. Then let's check how LLM's generated examples compare to the official OpenMP examples. Here we have an official example of CMD directive from the OpenMP specification on the left and an example generated by ChatGPT on the right. The official example demonstrates the use of CMD directive with a private and reduction clauses. Unlike the official example, the GPT version simplifies the code by only using the reduction clause without the need for a private variable. In this case, ChatGPT simplifies the example by omitting the use of a private variable, making it easier to understand for beginners while still demonstrating the key concepts of CMD vectorization. When we're assessing the details generated by the LLMs, we would like to discuss more about the in-context learning of the LLMs. In this instance, our focus is on the descriptions of do a cross class. The primary objective of this study was to assess the LLM's ability to extract and comprehend detailed information, specifically concentrating on their understanding of the do a cross. Significant changes in the order directive has led to the removal of the CMD, threads, and depend clauses making the do across the sole clause associated with the other directive. 
Our analysis examined whether the LLMs could currently learn from the input documents rather than relying only on pre-existing knowledge. ChatGPT initially did not retrieve any content about the do across clause when directed to study the order directive and its clauses. Instead, it uses the depend clause incorrectly. However, when explicitly directed to focus on the do across clause, ChatGPT demonstrated a deeper understanding and provided a more comprehensive response. It currently is currently recognized that to do a cross was defined as a clause, explained its use, and even described its capability with the order directive. Conversely, Gemini explained the do a cross is defined as the clause, and its clause is used to specify explicit dependencies between iterations in parallel execute loops. Cloud's responses primarily offered general explanations of the specification of the do across concept, not the clause. clause. We believe that it failed to identify information specifically about the do across clause. It just finds some descriptions of the concepts in a different chapter. The design of the interactive OpenP programming book is shown in this figure. On the client side, users can access the book from a browser on any web-enabled device. Besides conversational reading instructions, they can modify the corresponding Jupyter notebooks and conduct experiments. For the server side, all the book's resources are stored on GitHub. The Jupyter notebooks, which act as the coding sandbox, are served via Jupyter Lab with a native kernel. There are three ways to deploy the book. Display the book on a local Linux machine, self-hosting, and utilize third-party service like Bender. Each method has its own strengths, and we will not go in details here. We provided an online environment using Bender, and the users can use it directly for convenience. On this page, we showcase our online book and the code editor provided to users along with the output results generated when running the code. The interactive nature of the book offers learners a hands-on experience. Rather than simply reading about the OpenP, they can run code in real time, experiment with different clauses, directives, and configurations, and then immediately observe how these changes impact the program's behavior. Let's sum up with the key takeaways. Firstly, LLMs have significantly enhanced the efficiency of generating education contents, and they can be instrumental in modernizing educational practices. However, virus techniques are required to address some of the limitations of LLMs, and manual review is still essential. Secondly, for integration with traditional methods, Effective learning is not solely dependent on LLMs. Instead, LLMs must be strategically integrated with traditional education methods to maintain the necessary depths and currency. For the real-time code execution, one of the stand Standout features of our approach is the use of Jupyter Notebooks, which allow for real-time code execution and immediate feedback. As we look forward, we aim to refine the integration of LLMs into more educational frameworks. And another area for improvement is the design of better prompts. We also plan to explore the scalability of this approach across different programming languages. And finally, we will conduct ongoing assessments of the educational impact of those tools. Thank you all for your time and attention today. Our contact information is listed here. I'd be happy to take any questions you may have about our project or anything related to OpenP programming. Thank you.